Hi friends, it's Deanna here today, and today we're sewing up the Timeless Trench Coat Pattern. This is a really cute pattern. I can't wait to sew it up. I know it looks difficult, but together we can do it. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna jump right in and get started. I'm grabbing all my pattern pieces. We're gonna start with our back. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out this shape right here. This is my back dart. I like to go ahead and remove it off my pattern piece so I can mark my fabric. We're gonna mark our liner and our outer fabric. Once you've cut out your um, area, you're going to go ahead and mark your fabric, liner and outer, on the wrong side to create the darts. The darts. <laughs> we're going to do it on both sides. So we'll flip the pattern piece over and mark the other side as well. I'm using a water soluble marker. Um, you you want to use something that you can remove later, um, but that's up to you. All right, now we're going to grab our dart, the ends, and we're going to fold our fabric over right sides together so that your dart is folded right at the middle. Um, I like to grab a pen, pen and go through one side and then come out the other side and make sure that it's lined up. The pen is lined up, so now it's lined up on both sides. Then I go over and kind of go to a little bit up and then make sure it comes out the right place on the other side so I can match them up. See, it's lined up here and it's lined up here. Do the same for a couple more times all the way down to the liner and the outer piece. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew our dart. We're gonna start here at that middle piece. We're gonna put our needle down right at the middle and we're gonna go towards the edge of the fabric. So make sure that this is lined up here correctly and you're just gonna come right off the fabric. As you get closer to the edge, you can make your stitch a little bit shorter and then just kind of come off and, and leave a long tail. Then you're going to want to tie like a little knot here at the end. You don't back stitch and you don't want a tight, tight knot. You just want a little knot so it doesn't come unraveled. But if you tighten it too tight, then it's going to... Um, give you a pucker right there. You don't want that. And you can trim this um, extra uh, thread. Then we're going to start on the other end and go down towards the other side. And you can, I'm just going to go over here on this side because it's easier for me to see. You can backstitch here at the beginning. Make sure that it's overlapping the other thread so they're connected. And then we're going down this way. And we will do that same step right here at the bottom and we'll do that for all sides and the liner. Once that's done, we're gonna grab our iron and we're gonna give it a little steam here from the wrong side. And then right here at the center, we're going to clip that open do not cut the threads you're just kind of gonna vent it so it will kind of crease a little bit so it doesn't um, bulk then we're gonna give it a little bit more steam to flatten it out from the wrong side and then from the right side see how nice that dart looks you can barely even see it right there I'm gonna do that same step to the other side and to the liner now we're going to grab our collar and our back facing and we're going to add some interfacing to it and then if you're gonna add interfacing to your lapel you can go ahead and do that at the same time we're just adding it to one of the collar pieces and to the back piece I'm not going to add it to my lapels, but um, it would give it more stability if you add the interfacing. 
All right, so this is my back bodice liner, and I'm going to go to my sewing machine and stay stitch the top of the neckline so it doesn't stretch. Woven fabrics can sometimes like warp as you're sewing, so doing a stay stitch helps it not to stretch out. A stay stitch can just be a long straight stitch on your sewing machine, so I'm gonna go do that real quick. Now that my stay stitch is there, we're gonna find the half and mark it of my back liner. We're gonna grab our facing and we're gonna find the back of our facing as well. And we're gonna match up our facing and our liner right sides together at that half mark right there. And then we're gonna go over to one edge and you'll see that the facing pokes out just a little bit, uh, three eighths of an inch here. Once you sew it together, it will match up really nicely. So it hangs out a little bit at the edge. So if you're like, yours is hanging out a little bit at the edge, you're like, why is it doing that? It's meant to do that so that when it's sewn together, it fits really nicely. And then we're going to fit it all the way around. Now, if you're having trouble getting it to fit, you can clip a little bit um, your seam allowance. That way it kind of turns, but um, you want them to face right sides together here at the edge and match nicely. All right, so this is what it looks like from this side. This is what it looks like from the wrong side. If you can see it's and what you want to do, and there's the little piece hanging out, what you want to do now is you want to go ahead and sew top stitch that. And you can top stitch a little bit to the left of the stay stitch. So that way you can cover that stay, stay stitch, you can't see it, or you can pull that stay stitch out after. So let's go ahead and sew that on. Once that's done, we're going to open it up and press it. And you'll see that that allows it to match up here at the and centers, at the tops, at the sides, I guess. Now, if you want, you can go back and top stitch along this edge right here. Um, I am not going to do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and move on. All right, I'm gonna create a hanging loop by grabbing a fabric that is two by four. First, I'm gonna steam it in half, wrong sides together. Then I'm gonna bring those sides in to the center and steam. And then I'm gonna fold it once more. Then I'll go and top stitch it on both sides to close that up. So that the two sides are touching, right sides together. And I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna find my half of my collar piece and I'm gonna baste it on right there at the half. Right here on this video, I actually tacked it on backwards. So make sure you flip it over and do it the right way. This will be how I hang it, you know, like a hanging loop for later. All right, now I'm going to be working on the lapel pockets. I've already got them cut out. Don't mind the fact that my fabric does not align. Um, my, my matching, my stripe matching. Um, but I think it's still gonna be super cute, hopefully. Anyway, so I've got my, this is my lapel pattern piece and here's my side pattern piece. I'm just going to place them like right next to each other like so. This is how they're going to end up being sewn up together. Um, so here's my top of the lapel pocket alignment line. So I'm going to place that right sides right here. So that way I can go ahead and align my pocket right sides together. I'm going to go ahead and sew it on. Now I'm going to go ahead and open that up. This is the wrong side. And I'm gonna press that seam towards the pocket. And then I'm gonna go and understitch the pocket, which means I'm going to sew on that edge of the pocket, top stitching that seam allowance right here to the actual pocket. So I'm gonna to top stitch right there. And I'm gonna do that for both sides of the lapel and also for the sides. All right, now we're gonna grab that lapel. So here's my lapel, right side up. As you can see, here's my pocket, right side up. And I'm gonna grab the part that matches. This is the side one that matches this. Here's the wrong side. Um, so to place it right sides together so that they match up. 
and we're going to sew this pocket on in two different steps. First, we're going to start sewing the side of the panel, the side panel to the lapel, starting here at the shoulder, right sides together, all the way down. All right, so you've got all this clipped or pinned and you've arrived here at the pocket. If you grab your pocket pattern piece, you will see that you have a couple of marks here, stars. I'm going to put a mark on where those stars are because what we're going to do first, if we're going to sew all the way down from the shoulder seam all the way down to that first mark, then we're going to back stitch and turn all the way around the pocket. Then on our second step, we're gonna start right here at that mark and go all the way down to the bottom of our coat. And you're gonna do this using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All the way up to the mark, back stitch around the pocket, and right here, then start at the top and go all the way down. Once that's done, we're gonna press the pocket towards the lapel side. And then on the right side, here's my pocket and it should not be visible. See how it's nice and straight? How good that looks, except for the fact that I didn't match my pattern. That's okay, we're not gonna talk about that. We're just gonna talk about how pretty this pocket looks. It's all hidden. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. All right, now we're gonna grab the other lapel and the um, liner piece, and we're going to place them right sides together and sew those as well. Starting at the shoulder seam and going all the way down. Once we've got that finished, we can steam this seam. And you wanna steam the seam of your outer as well. And what I wanna do is, if you have a ham like this, um, it comes really, really helpful right here when you're shaping this out. You wanna open up this seam allowance and kind of shape it out right here using a um, one of these hams. It is super, super helpful. But if you don't have one, you can definitely just do it on your ironing board. Now I'm going to do that to all my sides. All right, so now once we've got the pocket all set up, we want to attach some of the buttons if you're doing the lapel pocket. Because you see these two buttons right here will be right where the pocket is. So when the pocket is sewn on, it'll be hard for you to sew a button on. Now the buttons I have are the ones I have the loop. So that'd be fine because I can always move it up and sew it from this side. You don't have to go all the way through like you saw a regular button. But if you're sewing a regular button that you have to go all the way through, it is recommended that you go ahead and sew it right now. Um, before you do so though, if you did not interface your bodice, you want to make sure that you put some interfacing where the, I got to cut this up, but uh, put some interfacing where the buttons are going to go because you want it to have stability and not to rip out when you're uh, wearing it. Now, I'm going to skip this step for now because I have not been able to find, find the exact buttons I want. These are okay, but um, I ordered some buttons, so I'm waiting for those to come. So I, I, I will do that step later. Um, they're the kind that you sew from the top anyways, so I'll be able to sew it from this way and not attach it to my pocket. I'll probably stick my hand in my pocket and sew them this way like that. Um, but it is it is recommended to go ahead and sew them on now on your wearer's left side using your guide. As you see, you have the guide here of where the buttons are gonna go. Just mark them and go ahead and sew them on. So that way it's easier when you get to the next step. Once my buttons have been attached, I'm gonna go ahead and sew here where the pocket ends, I'm going to do a basting stitch to baste it on so that when I sew the side on, then um, it will be that when I when I finish this up, it will be this will be basted on when I put the lining on. I'm sorry. 
All right, once that's completed, we're gonna go right here. This is my main bodice. This is my lapel area. Now, to prevent from this distorting and or stretching out and looking funky, go ahead and place a stay stitch down, about an inch down this way, and then stop and go up. Uh, stay stitch, you can just use it like a basting stitch or something like that, that keeps it from stretching out right here. And then we're going to grab our back piece and our two front piece, keeping in mind which one's your left and which one's your right, and we're gonna sew our shoulder seams. So I'm gonna do both of them at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this down, go top stitch, I mean, uh, stay stitch this corner here on both, and then stitch the shoulders. Keep in mind that I'm also doing that to the liner and I forgot to base the loop on, so I will do that at the same time. really important step that you don't want to miss is always steaming your seam allowance open so make sure you're doing that as you go with each step all right next we're going to grab our collar and we're going to place them right sides together and we're going to sew around the bottom edge we're going to sew up well up over and down um, when you get to towards the corners, you can make your uh, size of your stitch a little bit smaller and tighter around this corner edges and then go all the way. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and clip these corners, but making sure that you don't cut into your seam, uh, into your stitch. Just clip that seam allowance. You don't want to clip that stitch, but you just want to get close to it. Now we're going to turn it all the way. All right, now we're going to give it a good steam. All right, now along these edges, you're going to baste it together and you're going to stay stitch around the neckline. And now if you want to, you can top stitch around the outer edge, but I'm not going to. I think more of a luxurious, luxur, mm, I can't say the word. Anyway, a better looking coat. I don't want to top stitch it here. I want it to stay like this. I just like the look of that better on my coat. So let's go do that. All right, friends, so as I mentioned for the buttons, you want to at least put a little bit of interfacing where the buttons go. And then I got to thinking and thinking about how this coat looks. And once I did the collar and look at how good that looks with the interfacing it's just going to sit a lot nicer and everything. I figured that I should definitely put some interfacing on this to give it a little bit of stability. So I went ahead and cut out some interfacing and I'm gonna have to make it a little bit thinner, obviously because I already sewed the seam here, but I am going to go ahead and add this interfacing. So that way I moved my pocket out of the way. I'll have to baste it down again over here, but that way I um, have that reinforcement um, so that my jacket has that stiffness and, and like crispiness that I want it to have. So. Yes, I know I'm a little stubborn and if you're stubborn like me, I'm going to tell you that I think the interfacing will make a lot of difference. So change your mind with me and let's put some interfacing on this. All right, we're going to start our color. So first thing first, we're going to fold this color in half and find our half of our color and mark that. I'm going to mark it with a pin and I'm going to do the same with my back, I'm gonna match those shoulder seams and I'm gonna to go to the back and mark where my half is here in the back. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my collar and the side that has the interfacing, make sure which one's the one that has the interfacing, this side is gonna to be touching the collar. So the back of the shirt, of the bodice, back bodice. So we're gonna match up where that half is right here, That middle section 
and then we're going to go along the edge and it's going to end up here at the v so we're going to grab some scissors and we're going to clip that v a little bit don't cut your threads that you uh sewed just go like up to the threads but not quite to the threads not don't cut the threads so right there and do it on both of those v's don't cut the thread though all right so now that that's opened up we're going to match this end of our body of our collar right here to that v right there and we're going to clip or pin and we're going to clip or pin this whole back bodice and lapel area right sides together because we're going to sew all that here together and we're going to do the same on the other side here is the see how it like here's my lapel and this is a little area that we sewed up right here we stitched and we got cut that little v area there our end of that color right here is going to match up right to that where that v ended right there and we're going this way and then what we're going to do here is we're going to pivot the collar so that the other side is attached here and right here where this v is we're going to stop basically right here and then turn it and go to the other way so that you don't have a pucker here you can go here and stop and then come like right where that turn is and go the other way and you may want to start like start from here and go in start from here go in and then do the other side and we're going to do the same on the other side as you came right here see how you open that v right there this is going to turn over this way and you may have to split that v a little bit when you're sewing it and come right up to the v and then go the other way uh, to help you get it even and you could do uh, what i've done before is do it with a long basting stitch first and it's like baste it on i would do it from this angle so you can see the v and kind of turn it baste it on and then turn it around and make sure that your v is really nice and clean here and it's not puckering i mean it's puckering right now because it's just pin but make sure it's not puckering right there and then if it looks like oh that looks really good then we can go ahead and go over that basting stitch but with a smaller stitch we do the regular uh straight stitch but that's going to look so good once it's done so let's go do that all right now that i've basted let me turn so here as you can see i turned right at the v and um, when i turn it around look at how good that looks that's pretty straight right there that's the part i basted now i need to make sure that i go back and i'm going to sew it really nice with a um, this was just basted on i'm going to sew it really nice with my seam allowance and everything over that seam now i'm going to show you on this side because on this side i got off and look how it looks all bumpy that's not good enough so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off and redo this right here. And then once both sides are good, then I'm going to go back and stitch it correctly. Um, so I'm just doing the same thing, but stitching it again so I can get this side to look exactly like this side. That's what you want. You want a nice, smooth finish. All right. Once you are satisfied with your color, make sure you give it a really really good press pressing all the way is what's going to make this coat look really really good all the steps along the way you want to press if you're using a fabric that is sensitive make sure you're using a cloth on top of your fabric so that it's not going to mess it up and ruin it before you even get to wear it so make sure you're taking care of how you steam your coat all right, now we're going to grab our uh, liner and we're going to sew our liner to our um, outer. We're going to match it all right sides together, kind of the same like we matched our collar. We're going to clip into these V's right here of the liner the same way that we did our on our outer. And we're going to match up here in the center all the way here to that v right here where it ends and then turn it down to the other side 
And we're going all the way down the front of the lapel. Here's what that lapel pocket is. We're going all the way down to the bottom. And then down the other side as well. Where that V is right here. And then we're gonna turn down the lapel. And we're gonna go sew all that way around. Um, matching again here at the at the collar, we're gonna do the same thing that we did when we attached the other, the main collar. So make sure that you pivot here at the V and go all the way down. Like I said, you could baste it first and check it and then sew it all the way. Once we're finished, we're going to trim those corners of the lapels right here and we're going to steam our seams open. You want to trim those corners so that way they turn nice when it's time to turn. All right, now we're going to sew our sides together. I mean, not our sides, our fronts together. Well, I guess it is our sides. We're gonna match up our front and and back seams, right uh, side seams, I'm sorry. And we're gonna sew those up, right sides together. Once we're done sewing that, we wanna put a stay stitch around our arm size so that it doesn't distort and get too wide. And we're also going to do the same with our lining pieces. As we're sewing our lining pieces together, we want to leave a gap on one of the sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew and leave like a four to six inch gap where I will be able to later turn it around and also stay stitch the um, arm side of your liner. The pins kind of to remind me to stop there and leave that opening. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up those seam allowances on those side seams. We're gonna work on our belt loops. We're gonna grab our belt loops and fold them wrong sides together down the middle in steam. Then we're gonna bring those two sides into the middle. and then fold them right down the middle. And then we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and top stitch them down. All right, now to attach the belt loops, we're gonna grab our bodice and you will have, so this is my side bodice here let me place her here, goes this way. And you see the little marks right here where the belt loops are gonna go. You can go place that on here, match it up, and mark your fabric where the belt loops are supposed to go. And then you're gonna fold them a quarter inch down and then a quarter inch down on this, on the bottom, and pin them on. And then you're gonna top stitch it on at the top, back and forth, and at the bottom, back and forth. Get ready for our sleeves and we're going to do is we're going to grab our sleeve outers and our sleeve liners and we're going to fold them right sides together at the outer edge and sew them up and we're going to go ahead and open up those um, seams right here
All right, now we're gonna attach our sleeves and we're gonna attach them to the wrong side, the right side, I'm sorry. So we're gonna grab our, where are my arm sides? Okay, so here's an arm side. And we wanna make sure which one's the front and which one's the back. So this is the back area, this is the front. Um, and you wanna make sure that you have it marked on your sleeve as well. I'll turn my sleeve right side out. And my sleeve, here's my front, here's my back where I marked it. So since this is my back here and that's my front, that doesn't match up. So I gotta use the other one. So let me turn the other one right side out. And I'm gonna fit it right into my arm side and match those seams. I'm gonna match that bottom seam together. And then I'm gonna match the top notch that was marked on my pattern piece. I marked it by doing like a little notch up here to my shoulder seam. And match up those raw edges right sides together. And then we're gonna go sew it. And we're gonna do that for all the sleeves and the lining sleeves as well. So now we want to steam your sleeve cap. Um, you don't want to steam it flat. You kind of just want to steam it with the edge of your iron. And then you can steam it, the steam allowance, towards the inside of the cap. But you don't want to, we're not steaming this seam flat. So you could use one of these. Okay, now if you want to go ahead and sew your buttons on now, you can. Um, so that if you don't want them to, like if you don't want the thread to show through all the main the main layer and the back layer, you can sew them now um, or you can sew them later. What we're going to do now is sew the bottom of your coat um, right sides together, making sure the sleeves are going to be inside here on the right side so you don't want to catch those out. just want to sew all the bottom pieces. Right, so then you're gonna press those seams at the bottom and we're gonna go ahead and get ready for sleeves by pulling the sleeves out wrong side out so we've got this is the main sleeve on one side and the liner on that same side and then here's the lining sleeve on the one side and the main sleeve of that side then we're going to go ahead and grab our main sleeve. Hold on, get it all the way out. I grab that main sleeve and we're gonna fold it uh, wrong side out. So the wrong sides will be touching, the right side will be out here. And making sure that they're nice and not turned, we're gonna face it, we're gonna meet that sleeve, that right, Li the lining sleeve, we're gonna match them up right sides together here. Make sure they're not twisted. Armpits stringing up, armpit standing up, and they're gonna match up. And we're gonna sew those together. Now you don't, it's, you're gonna sew it with a 3 8 seam allowance. The only reason why you fold it an inch is just for ease of sewing. As you're turning around, you can sew it easier but you will be using your 3 8 seam allowance. And do the same for the other one. So here's my sleeve. Here's my other, my outer. I'm gonna fold that down about an inch or so. I'm gonna grab my lining piece and I'm gonna fit it right there, right sides together and clip around. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sew those on. You're not attaching them to the sleeve, you're just grabbing them together and sewing that other 3 8 seam allowance. All right, we are nearing the end and we wanna make sure that everything's gonna be nice and even. So we're gonna clip all these corners 
we're gonna clip make sure the lapel corners are clipped everything is nice and ready to be turned we're gonna give everything a good steam again all the seams um, the sleeve seams the bottom of the jacket you want everything to be nice and flat and steamed down so that way it'll turn and be like really nice and flat once it's turned so i'm giving everything a nice finishing steam once all that's done we're gonna find where we left that gap right here at that seam that side seam and we're gonna very carefully turn everything right side out as we turn everything right side out we want to poke out the corners and make sure that everything is nice and neat and sewn together nicely if there's any gaps or anything you want to go back and take care of fixing that now before you sew it closed so we're going to turn it all around and then we're going to give it a good steam because that's your steaming you'll be able to see that everything is all nice and how it's supposed to be look at how good that looks and I do have like a bunch of like um, threads that I need to clip. I'm going to go in. I'm going to steam all the corners. Make sure everything's nice and pressed. All the corners are poked out. Make sure everything it's looks it's, it's looking nice. And not like, okay, right here it looks like I messed up a stitch right there. Like somehow it caught it. It looks like it's just a random stitch from somewhere else. So I'm going to go back through that gap I just wanted to show you how you can just go back and fix it now before you move move on to the next step which is closing everything up see I can see it right here it was just a little stitch right here so I can remove that with my seam ripper and fix it before I close everything up because once I close everything up it's gonna be much harder to fix see that just got caught right there when I was sewing so then I can go back and just make sure that I reinforce that stitch right there and I'm not catching any more any of the part of the fabric. So that's the good thing about, see, it came undone. That's the good thing about going back and looking through everything to make sure you didn't make any of those silly mis mistakes like this. And if you did, then you can just go fix it before you close it all up. So I'm gonna go fix that. I'm gonna poke everything out. I'm gonna give it a really good steam. And then we'll move on to the next step, which is the belt. After we're done giving this a really good steam all the way around, you can, you have the option to go ahead and top stitch around the whole jacket if you want it, around the whole coat. Um, this is up to you if you want to give it that top stitch look all the way around. I think I'm going to look and see what my coat looks like without the top stitching and then decide later if I do want to top stitch it or not. Um, I sometimes like the look of top stitching and sometimes I just, I think it looks cleaner without it. So I'll decide that after I'm completely done. All right, last but not least is, well, actually I still have to do my buttons, but like I mentioned earlier, my buttons have not come in yet. Um, I have some other buttons, but I think what I'm going to do is I tried it on without buttons. And then now I'm like wondering if I even want to add buttons anyway. I might actually leave it without the buttons. I'm gonna top stitch the outer side of the jacket. So here is my jacket. I need to steam it, give it a really good steam everywhere. I haven't steamed it all the way around. Um, and then I'm gonna give it a, a top stitch around here and around this area and finish it. And I'm gonna show it to y'all and I'm gonna take some pictures of it without buttons because I feel like it looks so nice and smooth without buttons. I tried to grab some buttons that I had not enough of and kind of place them on there and I thought it was a little bit, I don't want uh, anything to distract from like this creaminess, nice uh, classic color. So I think if I do the tie and if I want to close it, I can tie it or even put in like a like a little uh, something that you can't even see, like a tack or something that I can tack it closed if I wanted to. But I don't know that I, I think I'll wear it more open. So we'll see. But anyway, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna get it finished and then I'm gonna show you and everything. And then you can tell me in the comments below what you would like to see. 
um, if you want me to go ahead and make the buttons because I got a kit to make fabric buttons uh, to use the same fabric to make some buttons to go along um, <clears throat> and then let me know what you think I should do or if you think it will look cute without the buttons so let me go ahead and top stitch around and meanwhile we'll work on this belt I ran out of the fabric I don't have enough so I've got this other fabric that I'm going to use for the belt if I don't like it I might go back and buy some more of the other fabric and redo the belt it really doesn't matter because it's a it's a side piece it's not going to go attached to the actual pattern so we're going to make it with this fabric and if I don't love it then I'll go get some more of the other fabric but anyway what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the two pieces and placing them right sides together and I'm gonna sew this edge here real quick all right now I'm going to go ahead and open this seam allowance here in steam then I'm gonna go ahead and fold the belt wrong sides together right down the middle and steam then I'm gonna fold those in those sides in right to the middle and steam this is going to be kind of the same way we did the belt loops i also want to bring in these edges so like quarter inch seam allowance here at the edge and once i've got that all in i'm going to bring it back in here and fold it one last time right sides together then i'm going to go and top stitch all the way around the whole thing all right i'm going to go top stitch this and um, top stitch my coat all the way around and i will be done now, if you are doing buttons, like I said, you will be adding your buttons to the wearer's left and all the instructions are on the pattern itself. All right, friends, we are finished with our coat. How gorgeous did this turn out? Like, tell me it doesn't look gorgeous. I love it. I love everything about it. I love the pockets. Look at how good they look. You can't even barely see them on there. They look amazing. I love it. I love the belt um, option. Now, like I told you, I have not done buttons because I'm waiting on that kit to uh, arrive. But as I was looking at some inspiration photos, some of them don't even have buttons. Um, I probably will most likely wear it open most of the time. And if I wanted to close it, I really could just use my strap and close it up. So it's almost like I don't even need the buttons. What do you think? Comment below and let me know what you think. Maybe I'm just being a chicken about the buttonholes. I'm not sure. I did order a kit to make my own buttons. So I'll use the same fabric to make buttons on this because I tried on some darker ones and I did not like it. Um, so yeah, comment below and let me know what you think I should do. Um, and yeah, that wasn't as hard as you thought it was going to be, was it? If we take our time and we do it one step at a time, we can definitely sew anything together. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Don't be scared. You can do it. I know you can. Go grab your pattern. Come back and sew it up with me. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss any of our tutorials. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.